So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a unique illustrated house portrait in Procreate. These are great as gifts or as something to sell on Etsy. It's also pretty trendy right now, but I think that's a good thing because there's plenty of room as long as you can find your own niche and style. This time, the watercolor effect is coming from the back run paper texture. It's pretty rough and a little bit grungy, and this does a lot of work to make the blank areas of the illustration more interesting. For the brushes, any will work, but I'm going to use the regular watercolor brushes. I've also made a set of pattern brushes that you can download for free, and I'll explain those and what they do later on. So I've already got a sketch here, and I've also got a photo kind of off screen that I'm using as a reference. And the first thing I'm going to do is use the abstract round brush, and I'm going to quickly go through this and paint the uh, background of the house, the roof, and the windows, uh, each their own color on their own separate layer. And I'm just roughly filling it in with the abstract round, and then wherever I went beyond the sketch, I'm just using the eraser to kind of cut it back and straighten it out a little bit. And you can see what I mean here in the layers panel. So here are the windows, here's the roof, and then here's the body of the house. Next, I want to select the layer that has the body of the house, and I'm going to add some dark and light facets to it. So for that, I'm going to use the selection tool set to freehand, and I'm going to select uh, basically each different part of the house and slightly shift the brightness of it. So I'll select this part and I think I'll darken it because it's a little set back and I'm just going to go through and do that to each part here. There we go, we've got a nice variety of tones. Next, I'm going to do the same thing to the roof. And I recommend giving the windows a kind of a special treatment of their own. So I'm going to make sure the window layer is selected. And what I like to do is use the freehand selection tool. And I'll select some random part of each window, usually the bottom, and I'll feather it out. And I'll darken it. And then I'll do another random selection in there, feather it again, but this time I'll lighten it. And it just makes the window look a little bit more interesting and uh, sort of like it has more depth or transparency. And I'm going to go through and do that to all the windows. Now once the main elements of the house are done, we can move on and start adding details. And the first one I like to add is the various texture on the different elements. So I'm going to start with the uh, brick wall here. So I want to make sure that layer of the house is selected and I'm gonna make a new blank layer above it. Now, I've made some kind of pattern brushes for you that you can download for free in the description. And there are a lot of patterns to choose from, but this time I'm gonna use the brick scatter brush. And I'll use a pretty dark red tone, because that sort of suits uh, the bricks here. And I'm just gonna go all over this and add bricks pretty randomly, but not necessarily covering uh, every surface. There we go. Now, the reason I did it on its own layer is because I want to change the transparency mode of that layer to multiply. Then I can lower the opacity and set it to a point where the brick detail is there, but it's really, really subtle. Next, I'm going to move on and do the uh, tile pattern on the roof. So I'm going to select the roof layer, make a new blank layer above it, just like before. But this time, I'm going to use white, and I'm going to change the pattern brush to the classic roof. Actually, I'll use the ceramic roof and I'm just going to go over this. And uh, this time we can leave it at normal. We don't have to change it to multiply like we did before, but you can still lower the opacity if you want. And looking at this, uh, I just realized I forgot to darken the doorway. So if you remember the first step where we kind of blocked out some uh, dark and light areas of the house, I'm going to finish it up by uh, making this entrance area a little bit darker. Now at this point, I like to make a layer above everything, and I'm going to go through and use the fine liner pen brush, that's the one in the regular kit, this one here, and I'm going to do all the uh, window frame details and door details. Thank you. 
Next, I'm going to continue adding detail uh, using the same fine liner pen brush on the same layer. But this time, I'm going to focus on some of the accents on the house, the railing here and the pillars. Now at this point, the house illustration is almost done. Uh, I just want to add some shading, and this is probably the most important step. It's really going to turn this kind of flat illustration into something really three-dimensional and eye-catching. So my trick for the shading is, I'll make a new blank layer above everything. I'm going to set the transparency to multiply, and then lower the opacity to 15%. Then again, using the uh, same fine liner pen we've been using, but this time I've set the color to pure black, I can actually just draw on a shadow, just kind of over top of everything. And I'm gonna go through the whole illustration and add a shadow wherever I think uh, it looks good. And at this point, once the shading is all done, I like to add some line details. So again, I'll make a new blank layer. I'm gonna select a pretty dark gray tone, same fine liner pen, and I'm gonna sparingly add a few black lines wherever I think it needs a little bit of help with the contrast. And of course, uh, if you want to adjust the strength of these outline details, you can always set the layer to multiply and then adjust the opacity. Now to finish up the house, uh, you can add some plants in the front. Not every house has that, but this one in particular had quite a garden. So I'm going to do that on another new layer above everything. Same fine liner pen we've been using, and I'm just going to fill out uh, all the plants using a few shades of green. So at this point, the house is all done. I just need to merge the layers together onto one, but I really like how the sketch looks. It's kind of a subtle thing, but it has a cool look. So usually I turn off the sketch before I merge everything together, but I think I'll include it this time. And once everything is all merged together onto one layer like this, I like to use the arrow tool set to warp, and I'll kind of warp and bend the house a little bit just to make it a little bit crooked. I think this adds a bit of character to it. Next, I'm going to use the air tool again, set to freeform, and I'm going to shrink the house because I want to leave some gap on each side because I usually like to paint some botanical details there. So after that, I'm going to go through and add those botanical details and drop in my text arrangement. And just as you saw, these uh, botanical details are super quick and easy to make. All I used was the uh, fine liner pen for the stems, and then I used the hard edge brush uh, for the leaves. Now for the text arrangement, I made this ahead of time in Adobe Illustrator because I'm more familiar with how it handles text arrangements. And this is actually a font called Acrylic Hand that I recommend for a poster like this. Sometimes when you use a font, uh, it ends up being too perfect. So you can always uh, use the arrow tool set to warp and kind of bend it just like we did to the house to make it look a little bit more handmade. 
And there we go, just like that, our custom house portrait is all done. And here's a look at the final result. And that pretty much wraps it up. As always, thank you so much for your support. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.